All right, what did you guys pick? The brown bunnies. What did you pick? Dandelions. The dandelions. Okay, what are we going to make with them? The lemonade. 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 Okay, lemonade. lemonade. Okay, so we're making dandelion and violet lemonade. These are the Black King Pansy and violets, pansy. and we just have ones that grow in our garden. And then we have all these dandelions. And why are we making yeah, lemonade? We because we never had Where lemonade. are we going? To oh, Cedar Mountain. Mountain. To Cedar Mountain, right. We're going to go pick nettles. So we need a refreshing drink. <laughs> this one with the label here that's all funky has cayenne pepper in it. Okay, so we have about a cup or so of lemon juice in a half gallon jar. And then we're just going to add, go ahead and add some of your dandelions here. Now? Yep, go ahead and put and them in. And then we're going to add our violets as well. No Great more. job. Okay, so we're going to just cover this mix with water and I then we're going to leave it in our warm car while we hand. pick the nettles. Okay. So I forgot to mention that we also put about a cup or maybe a little less of honey in our lemonade. We're going to let this sit while we go and pick our nettles. All right, while these kids have fun running up and down this hill, getting their energy out, I thought I would tell you a couple of things that we're going to bring for foraging. Um, so I have a good hiking backpack here. This is what I've tested on lots of hikes. I always like to carry bug spray, sanitizer. I have things like, you know, typical survival things such as a knife and tissues and all that kind of thing. Um, this is something I like never ever come without. This is my green thumb salve and we use this on everything. Anything, it's called green thumb because it's like um, a gardener's best friend is what I like to say. And honestly, it's a mom's best friend because this is my go-to salve. I am not known for treating myself <laughs> and I am trying to be better about that but I am really great at treating problems my kids end up having so this has chickweed comfrey calendula nettle plantain um, just to name a few of the things in here it's great for slivers uh, plant rashes and bug bites burns cuts scrapes you name it we've used it on it and I love it so if you guys are actually interested in getting some of that I sell it on my website I'll leave a link in the description box for you guys so other things that I have, I have this mink red, which is kind of getting a little bit old. Usually we carry um, granola bars and whatnot. Of course, I carry my first aid kit. This just has a lot of little herbal things and band-aids and whatnot. And then lastly, I have field guides. Um, I always carry a emergency book with me so that it, you, um, this one I really love because it has huge writing. So if you end up with a problem, you can just go in here and find out what the solution would be. And then this is just a field guide for plants in our area. This is my favorite field guide. It has awesome pictures and descriptions and all kinds of things. So if I see a plant, I don't know what it is. I can just look it up in there and we're good to go. We're gonna hike up here. So today we are hiking again at Cedar Mountain Farm. I took you here and I'll leave a I cart up here for you on harvesting cottonwood buds. But today it's the spring and we're gonna do nettle harvest. I'm super excited. Okay, so we're hiking over here to the pond. This isn't where I normally harvest the nettles. And I don't know what we'll find. Ooh, it's very soft. But here's the pond, super pretty. Okay, so we're just gonna look around here and see if we find any. Generally, we harvest horsetail grass up here, um, but I, it's it's too early for horsetail grass. So if we don't find any horse or um, any nettles over on this side, oh yeah, here's horsetail grass right here. Here's the horsetail grass. It's just very small right now, so it's a little too young. Here's also this right here. Okay, so we'll keep looking here, see what we find. Found some poison hemlock, that's always fun. Ew! And, ew, what's the matter? Oh yeah, look at, you can see all the horsetail grass, all that green in there, that's all horsetail grass and catnips. Catnip, not catnip, cattails. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, maybe we'll just go back down. He brought his net today though. That's the smelly skunk cabbage yep. that we saw More last skunk week. cabbage. It's okay. 
We're gonna go back down by the creek. It won't be so smelly down there. Oh, actually, yes. I'm pretty sure I do see. Okay, so you can see up there across, that's all metals behind those cattails. We'll go over there. All right, we're on the other side now. So let's see what we can find. Dad's not gonna leave you, buddy. You're okay. I was just getting the fast part. And we have nettles, a whole bunch of them. Okay, so here are the stinging nettles right here. I am going to be very careful not to touch them right now because they do sting and it hurts. Um, when you're foraging for nettles, you need to bring a few extra things with you. I have a big basket. We're gonna fill this basket up. I know that's how much we need to get our family through for the year. And then also for fresh eating, because we plan on doing a little bit extra hiking and foraging and driving around, I went ahead and got a couple of paper towels damp and put them in these plastic bags. And this is what we're going to use for fresh eating for the week. Since I don't have nettles on my own property, I have to make sure I get enough so I don't have to keep coming back up to this farm. We also have a pair of pruning tools. And then the other thing you're going to want is a pair of gloves and a long sleeve shirt. Now this is not the best long sleeve shirt here because it's got the holes in it. If you have a tighter fitting one, that's better but you'll know why I wore this shirt here in a little bit. I'll, we'll talk to you about what we're gonna do. And then I wanted to show you a couple of different pairs of gloves. Now, normally I will wear a pair of very thick leather gloves, but they're insulated and I use them for farm tours. So this year I thought I would try out these regular gardening gloves and see how they do. And then I'm gonna show you another pair uh, type of gloves. So my mom came with us and she is going to show us her new gloves that she got. These are like a thicker leather glove and I know that they're gonna work and stop the nettles from being able to sting you. So that's exactly what you wanna do. You wanna put your sleeve over your glove, just like that. All right, you guys, these are stinging nettles. This is a huge clump of them. Um, <laughs> it's a little freaky being in here. So another way you can do it is if you put your glove over the top of your sleeve that'll work just fine so all you all we're gonna do is we're gonna look for good ones i try to pick the ones that are not buggy and that have uh, not too much damage on them like people walk through here so it's a path so some of these leaves have big holes in them and what all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off the top six to six to eight inches just like that and just break it off you can either Break it off right above a leaf node so then that will start branching and make more. Um, but this is gonna be the most tender, useful part of the plant. Now, obviously I'm not being stung right now, so these are working. What you're trying to avoid is these, I'm sure you can see them, these fine hairs on here, that's what's gonna end up sneak, stinging you. But here, this is a great stinging nettle. So we're gonna work on filling up our basket and uh, See, see how much we can get. are working great so I probably wouldn't want to put the back of my hand through anything but this, this part is working just fine so that's exciting these gloves are also great not getting any bricks through the gloves those are working fine but I do wish they were longer to go further up my arm to protect the spot between my arm when you're reaching forward then there's that gap there so I would either need something closer over here or a slightly longer glove would be helpful nettles for a really long time 
and basically what we do is mostly we use them dried and we will just hang them upside down or leave them in this big basket that I have and I'll just fluff them every few days until they're dry enough to be crunchy and we use them in all kinds of different teas in the winter time we'll use them also to make cakes and teas and um, soups and all kinds of things fresh but uh, something I have been really wanting to try and I definitely don't recommend that you try this but I'm going to try this today is people will harvest nettles barehanded or um, they will slap their wrists with them and purposefully get stung because nettle is super high in anti-inflammatory properties. Now, the reason I would like to try this is because it works great to get rid of arthritis, but also I it can, I know, be careful, buddy. It can also work great to heal carpal tunnel. Now I've been dealing with carpal tunnel syndrome for about two years now, and I'm telling you, it's really not fun. And it's stopping me from being able to do a lot of things on my homestead, like weeding or um, boning out elk and pigs and things like that. <laughs> so today I am going to test this out because I don't like to recommend things to people unless I've tried them. I am a trained herbalist. I am a certified herbalist, so I do know what I'm doing. I know this isn't gonna be super fun. I did just sting my finger back here through my glove, it, and it goes away relatively quickly, but we're gonna go ahead and try this. I'm gonna sting both of my wrists. One, this is my bad one. I'm gonna leave, and I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna suffer through the pain. This wrist, however, I am going to uh, sting myself give it a minute and then I'm going to use my green thumb salve on it and see if it takes the pain away um, especially now that I have a fresh <laughs> uh, fresh sting in my mind I know exactly how fast it, it should work uh, it will we'll give this a try on this this is something I have not tried yet if you do not have any green thumb or any um, like salve or whatever with you you can also find plantain and I'll show you that you can break that up and rub the juices all over it and that should help as well as um, something else that I hear is dock leaves you can do the same thing bruise them up and place it on there so let's go ahead and try this and see what happens and then I'm gonna put my gloves on is that stinging you Yep, feels great. Because <laughs> <laughs> your expression didn't change. I know. Ouch. Okay. All right, guys. Can I so you it? can see I have pretty good size rash starting there. <laughs> yep. It doesn't feel awesome, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to take... Let's leave those there. I'm going to take my gloves off. Ah, yep. Ouch. Okay, this one I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna let it be and I'm gonna see if this helps with the carpal tunnel problem. The carpal tunnel runs right through here and what happens is the nerve gets compressed and it makes my three fingers go numb. So that's how they've been all day is very tingly and not good feeling. This side is starting to burn. It's making me hot. <laughs> so I'm gonna try my green thumb salve and see if it makes it feel better. Okay, let's see. This one is painful. Look, I got a nice rash going on there. Oh yeah, that's a good sting right there. So now it's like welting up. You can see right here those little welts. I can say that my salve is not as fast acting as I was hoping it would be. Let's put some more on. It'll be all right. Okay, so this is this side here. You can see that guy yeah i've got got a, quite a few good ones on there it definitely is burning oh this guy <laughs> you can see it's pulling it out so that's the difference between the two i guess we'll see i'll let you guys know what my results are here coming up actually this one is starting to feel better already so this one is not this one is feeling worse by the second so I would say green thumb salve all the way. It's working good. And you can tell, so the plantain in that salve, it pulls out the poison. So you can see that's why these ones are more raised than these ones are just starting to raise up. So I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. This side doesn't feel good. So just a little reminiscing stinging nettle story. I was probably three or four years old and was going over to my friend's house in the neighborhood 
and their gate was closed and so I decided I don't think I was actually supposed to be going by myself possibly that probably was what I was doing wrong but anyway somehow I climbed a fence and behind me behind the fence was a stinging nettle patch very similar to this it was large at least it seemed like that to a three or four year old who knows maybe it was maybe it wasn't but unfortunately I fell backwards into the stinging nettle patch with short sleeves and short pants on and the effect of that was brutal it was extremely painful the treatment for that in those days at least by my mother who was a nurse but obviously some kind of a herbalist as well took leaves that are probably about this large they're called dock leaves in England and you spit on them and get the saliva going and then you put them across the stings and so I remember being laid up on the couch for quite a long time covered with dock leaves waiting for the stinging to end and so this was a little traumatizing today to actually voluntarily pick stinging nettles but thanks to the gloves I did not get stung we're good to go all right you guys it honestly is not that bad I mean it doesn't look great <laughs> but it's only been a few minutes and they don't hurt at all like this side doesn't hurt at all my other side is burning a little bit um here I can show you real quick this side it that is definitely burning but it's it's really not that terrible so what ends up happening now is that a itch can come after the burning sensation leaves but I don't think this side especially with that green thumb on there I don't think it's gonna do it so that's all there is to harvesting nettles. If you uh, if you don't think you have the right plant, you can always touch it and test it, and it'll tell you real quick if you've got the right one or not. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna take these back. Actually, what we're gonna go do now is we're gonna go hunt down some morel mushrooms. We have always wanted to go hunting. I don't know if we'll be successful or not. But no one in the family likes mushrooms except for me and well actually my mom likes mushrooms too but there's a lot of horror stories. If you have foraged for mushrooms or if you don't know what you're doing, being poisoned by mushrooms is really, it's a serious thing and I have not really messed with that over the years but I have gotten to know what my morels look like pretty well by seeing them actually a couple years ago was it last year or the year before year before year before micah discovered we had some morels growing on our property and um i got to taste them for the first time and now i really want some more so we're we're gonna go see what we can find and i think the kids kids are you guys ready for your lemonade yes yeah. i think it's time for some lemonade Okay, you're gonna have to hold this on there. Too good? Mm -hmm. All right, let's test out our lemonade here. Mm. It's a little bit tart. If you like it sweet, we like it tart. If you like it sweet, I would suggest putting a little bit more honey in than what we did, but it's pretty good for what we like. If you guys are liking this video so far, give us a thumbs up. All right, you guys, people in North Idaho, don't share their spots so yeah. if you're asking for huckleberries or morels so it makes foraging really hard if you actually have never done it before so i am super excited micah picked the place i think he knows me well enough we know where these mushrooms like to grow at and so we just kind of went with what we the woods that we know and i'm excited to say within 30 seconds of being out here found a morel i'm gonna show it to you so there he is right down in there and he's pretty good size too so we're gonna keep looking around and see if we can find some more so this is kind of silly but i actually didn't bring anything for harvesting morels because i didn't expect to find any we don't have a bag or anything um some people cut them some people pull them it really doesn't matter you can do whatever you want but here's the mushroom and i'm just gonna break it off at the ground level here we go just be sure don't pull it out you don't want to take anything out of the soil here that's where they'll keep coming back and then I'm just gonna shake it so that the um, spores come out and then that's all there is to it so there you go isn't that cute so let's see if we can find some more
Oh, pretty. I'm gonna try to find the get people. Well, we didn't find any mer more morels, just the one, but it's a pretty good sized one, so I'm happy. Since I'm the only one who likes mushrooms, I guess it's all I need, really, right? Oh. We still had a good adventure, didn't we, babe? Yep. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, we did not a all right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on harvesting nettle and one morel. <laughs> Stay tuned for this week. Thank you, Benjamin. You're saying goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> um, stay tuned this week. We've got a lot of rhubarb and nettle and dandelion recipes coming your way. I'm super excited to take you along for some of the things that we like to cook and eat this time of year. You guys, I can't help myself. Seriously. I looked at the hill and I just knew that this had to be a good spot. And I was right. Ready? There they are. We're going to keep looking up here a little bit. So I thought I'd go ahead and tell you guys, while I'm not going to tell you where I'm harvesting, uh, I'm my reason is not because I believe in being secret or I care about giving away my spot. My reason is because I care a lot about being a... Um, a responsible forager which means that I don't take a lot of people if I'm gonna take people places and I know that there's plants it's probably going to be a new teaching spot for me and when I harvest things I'm very careful to make sure we do it right so like these morels we're gonna make sure that we shake them out oh they're not even right there anymore they're in the bag um, we're gonna shake them out and make sure we leave the spores behind I wish I would have brought a proper mesh bag so we're not, we're actually not going to take very many, but if I was, I would be bringing a mesh bag so that all the spores could be dropping, excuse me, as I'm harvesting. So if you want to find your own morels, look for down, like fallen down trees that are fir. Look for trilliums, which I've showed you in this video. Look for, um, what else do we look for you guys? Nettles, moist, like this is a southern... A mushroom. Oh yeah, that's a different kind of mushroom. A little one. So this is like a southern slope, so it gets lots of sun. Okay. Um, look for brambles and strawberries uh, and all like dock and that kind of thing. And that's going to be your tip of where to look. Another great place to look is going to be someplace that was burned last year um, or in the previous years. And that's going to be the way you're going to find it. So I'm actually going to put this away. I'm going to keep looking. If I find more, I'll show you guys. Um, cause this is really steep and I want to pay attention to my kids. So <laughs> Mike has got one up here. Let's check it out. Did you see it yet? Yep. Nice. I see one right in front of you too. I know. I was looking cool. at that one too. I was... Awesome. Let's you see want here. Me to pick them or what? Hang on. Okay. So there's a nice size one, but so look at, look at the top of this one. It's nice and clear. But then this one is crunchy, which means it's just past its prime. So we're going to leave these ones to make their spores fall and spread and make more for next year. So we can pick this one. I'm just going to reach down. Get in the... And there we go. Someone picked a really big one right here. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I found some! Right Did you, buddy? Oh, yeah. yeah, sweet! All right! Do you want to hold these? I'll go help him pick oh. this. You can't have two. Hmm? Two are yuck. Oh, that's okay. But good job you found them. No, that's awesome. two holes in them. Oh, yeah, I see those. But good job. But this one's good. Yep. Well done. So you just got to feel them. Is it ready? Yeah, these are a little past their prime. So it's best if we leave these, let them be. And then they'll make mm -hmm. their fruit for next year. And not more, but 